Why would somebody relapse when things are going good in their life? Things are going well. Let's get into it. Kate Ruggs, The Sober Dog, coming at you. I'm a certified recovery coach, also in recovery myself. Remember, Sober Dogs does not promote or condone any drug use. Please seek professional medical help if you have an addiction. If you get value from Sober Dogs content, please share the videos. Consider subscribing, or I will earn that subscribe by the end of this video. So why would addicts relapse when things are going well? Or why do people relapse when things are going well? I, I've been in recovery for about five and a half years now, and during that time, I've had a couple relapses and attended a ton of outpatient, detox programs, uh, recovery programs, 12-step programs, everything. More often than not, when somebody does go out and come back, they there's like a story of something bad happening. They got fired, they got a divorce, they lost their job, they, they um, you know, a family member got sick, something depression was kicking in. If bad things happening are 60%, there's 40% with when things are going okay. When a person does relapse, one of the most common questions, why, what triggered it, what could, uh, what can somebody else have done to help? What could you have do to avoid it? And they often say relapse happens well before we actually pick up, which I firmly believe in. So we're trying to analyze that, both the person who did it to avoid it next time and friends and family to maybe see if there's something that could have been changed or how they can help. When something's bad, this might be easy to look at. When something's good or things are, quote, going equal, life is all right, they're like, well, what caused this? So here are a couple of the big reasons why people would use or relapse when things are seemingly going well. The first one, boredom. Boredom is a killer for people in recovery. Boredom can be an absolute killer. We have trained our brain to believe that any Activity will be fun and better with drugs, which to a small extent was true for us in the beginning. Doing homework, better if I'm high. Cleaning the room, better if I'm high. Gotta go here. I got nothing to do for eight hours? Get high. It'll make whatever I'm gonna do fun. Play video, whatever. We have now trained our brain when there's dead time in recovery, it's like, what do we do? And we wanna jump back to the thing we did all the time and know best, which is get high or get drunk or whatever the case is. So boredom can just be this thing that slowly seeps in and pushes a little bit daily and daily and daily to where it goes to, oh, I could have just one or it's no big deal or I'm bored out of my mind. What would make this better? Getting high. Along with the boredom, you know, they say the quote, idle hands of the devil's workshop, which is very true for people in recovery. Most of us are grateful to be out of the chaos of addiction, but subconsciously we're so used to it and we crave the chaos a little bit. So we are off in recovery when things are not nuts, for lack of a better way to say it. We are used to getting robbed, finding money, being sick, fighting with everybody in our lives, flat tires, arrests, parole. So all of a sudden we get into recovery and half of those things aren't there anymore. And like a normal day might waking up and going to recovery program and having lunch and maybe watching some Netflix or having a couple hours at a job. We're off, we're used to chaos. So it takes us time and that boredom we subconsciously can create chaos if we're not careful. That leads into number two, which is self-sabotage. Self-esteem, self-worth, self-love, all these things are huge. People in addiction often lose all three of them. And then getting into recovery, it takes a while to rebuild. Subconsciously, a lot of times we don't think we deserve recovery. Maybe we just lost a friend and have survivor's guilt. Why did they die and I'm here? Maybe we've done a lot of bad things during addiction and we're like, why do I deserve a second chance? Why do I deserve this? There's a lot of internal self-sabotage things that happen. Not even with, I mean, take recovery and addiction out of it. This can happen with just people in the world in general. They don't think they're good enough for that step up. They don't think they're good enough for this. And it could be deep-seated childhood stuff or whatever. They will kind of cap out 
their expectations and their goals in life based on preconceived notions. This can happen in recovery. Oh, I, I, I'm sober a couple of weeks, but I always fuck up. Or I'm sober a little bit, but I don't deserve good things. Or we just start telling ourselves this negative thinking and it seeps in and, and you know eventually kicks our ass. That is why it's incredibly important to have people to talk to, build up a recovery community, and get those negative things off our chest, whether that's with therapy or a sponsor or outpatient or whatever. Clear out the baggage of the past. The next one, complacency. This leads a little, this has a little bit to do with boredom, but complacency is a big one for people in recovery. I can't safely have a beer. When I have a beer, I want another beer and another beer. And then as soon as that goes down, I want a bag of Coke and then a bag of heroin. And then I don't want to stop ever. Smashing that thought of having just one was something I had to do. I'm not saying everyone does. It's the program I follow. But the complacency, it's funny how the things that get us to where we are, we forget when things are going well. And what I mean by that, for me, it was 12-step programs, outpatient therapy, all that is what got me into recovery and then got my life pretty good. I slowly started stopping each of those things because things were going well and I had a little bit of clean time, eight, nine months. So I was like, okay, I could cut a little bit of those out. Those are what got me there. I can't expect to stay there if I cut those out. Complacency kicks in. It's as little, it slowly eats at you. And then a month later, yeah, I could do heroin today. And, uh, you know, it didn't end well. Thank God I'm alive today and got back. Complacency will eat into us and kick our ass. So how do you avoid these? Continuing to work a recovery program, whatever that means to you. 12-step, church recovery, outpatient, inpatient, therapy, fitness recovery, smart recovery, whatever. Something to keep it on our minds consistently that, okay, this isn't a one-time thing. I don't go to detox and I'm cured. You know, we have to continuously keep it on our minds that, okay, if I choose to do this, bad shit can happen very quickly again. The human brain's unique to where it tries to block out some bad memories, which is good for general life, but it's very good to remember some of the hard times so we don't go back there. So working a consistent recovery program, staying connected with others in recovery, I think is huge. Then we keep, you know, we hear their struggles on their bad days and on our bad days, we tell them our struggles and they help us and we can all help each other. The beautiful thing is typically everyone's not having a bad day at the same time. So when I'm down, they can help me. When they're down, I can help them and vice versa. This is also in like 12-step programs why they have people share what it was like and what it's like now. I'm gonna tell you about the bad shit that happened to let you know how bad it can get again, but then the hope and the recovery after. But the bad shit is kind of essential to remind people, you know, okay, I haven't had a drink or a drug or anything in five years, four years, nine years. You know, maybe one beer I could just go out and have for a lot of people, no, because this is where it can lead back to. But we're so far away from it that we forget. You know, I got 10 years, you know, from the day that I got arrested and all that terrible shit happened. We got to remember it. Also, continuously working on self and having self-awareness. I am a firm believer in what I said earlier. Relapse happens well ahead of actually picking up whether it's good or bad or whatever. Being aware of ourselves and knowing, okay, something is off. I've been off for a couple days now. Is it depression, complacency, uh, boredom, career, family? And then being in tune with that, okay, let me work on this. What, what helps? Is it fitness? Is it um, therapy? Is it you know seeing my doctor, medication? So being aware and knowing ourselves is important. And that's where we can avoid these pitfalls and not relapse when things are good or bad or ever, you know, in general.